In this lecture bite, we will look at a vector active structure, a simple truss, uh, but it'll be a little bit more complicated than our very simple truss. And we'll try to show how uh, internal stresses in each of the cords uh, help to balance out the external forces that we're, that we're putting onto it. So we'll start with uh, our truss here. This is a 60 degree truss. So all of the angles are at 60 degrees. That's convenient. We only need to memorize a couple of trigonometric uh, constants. Um, notice that it is five total panels and that we have 3,000 pound loads that we're putting uh, actually in between the nodes on the, on the bottom level. And we're getting those kind of into the truss by supporting them on hangers. So these white lines are gonna be tension columns. Uh, they will be carrying that thousand pound load and putting it uh, into these nodes up here. Because this is gonna get a little bit complex, um, I've gone ahead and labeled each node in the truss with a letter, so A through G. And we will call uh, each one of the cords by the, the two nodes that they connect. So this cord here we'll call AB, this one here will be CD, et cetera. And that'll help us keep organized as we sort of go through this. We know because it's a symmetrically uh, loaded truss that whatever loads we're putting onto it will have to get evenly distributed between the supports. So here we have three 1,000 pound loads. That'll be a total of 3,000 pounds. And if we divide that by the supports at A and G, um, we know that each one of those will have to have a reaction of 1,500 pounds. So 3,000 pounds going down has to be equaled by 3,000 pounds going up. So our process will be to look for a kind of way into the truss, a fairly simple uh, place where we can quickly assess what the internal stresses will be. We'll do this node by node. And the goal is to find the combination of forces that will keep each node in equilibrium. So not moving up or down, but also not moving left or right, right? staying in one place. Um, we'll start with uh, node A, and if you look closely, you'll see why. We have one reaction, 1,500 pounds that's pushing up, and we have two cords that come into node A. Uh, AB has a vertical dimension to it. Um, it's at a 60-degree angle. Uh, node, or sorry, a cord AC is a horizontal cord, and so it has no vertical component. And if you think about this, this means that AB is the only element that we have to keep node A in equilibrium. Node A is experiencing that 1500 pound reaction that's trying to push it up. And we need to find some internal stress that can have a vertical component equal to 1500 pounds pushing down. Now, if you think about it, the stress in AB can certainly do this, but because it's at an angle, any vertical force that we put that we uh, use in AB is not only going to be pushing down, it's also going to be pushing to the left. And so we're going to have to then resist the horizontal push that AB is going to put on node A. And as you can see, we can do that with cord AC, the, the bottom cord. That's going to have to pull to the right to resist that kind of leftward push that, that cord AB is going to exert on node A. Hopefully this will little get, get a little clearer uh, as we go in, as we get into it. So if we look at a free body diagram of node A, here are our three forces. Uh, one external force, that's the reaction, 1,500 pounds pushing up. Um, we've just talked through how this is going to work. So the, the FAB, the, that's the stress in cord AB, is going to have to be pushing down to resist the 1,500 pounds that, that are pushing up. And then because that's at an angle pushing down and to the left, we can take an educated guess that FAC, that's the stress within cord AC, is gonna to have to be pulling to the right. What do these arrows mean? Well, anytime we have a, an internal member that's pushing against a node, we're going to say that's in compression. And anytime that member is pulling on the node, we're going to say it's in tension. So AB looks like it's going to be in compression. AC looks like it's going to be in tension. And we're gonna to have to find the combination of forces that keep everything uh, in equilibrium, right? That make everything zero. Because we only have three forces working on node A, we can turn this into a force triangle. 
So we can rearrange those arrows. We know that we have 1,500 pounds going up. We know that we have a, 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 a horizontal component that's going to be pushing or pulling to the right. And we know that we're going to have an angled component at 60 degrees. We, we get that from the arrangement of the truss. And, and that is going to be the, the force in AB. Uh, we know that that's 60 degrees because of the, the geometry of the truss. And so we can go ahead and do a fairly simple trigonometry exercise to figure out our two missing legs. Okay, we will use our simple trigonometric functions. We have a, a, a simple right triangle, so we can use uh, sine, cosine, and tangent to relate opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides. And we'll start by trying to find the force within chord AB. This is the diagonal chord uh, that comes into node A. Notice that we know the angle, 60 degrees, and we know the opposite leg, 1,500 pounds. So we'll be looking for the hypotenuse, FAB, and therefore we'll use the sine function. And sine of the angle is going to equal uh, the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite leg, 1,500 pounds, the hypotenuse, FAB. To make the algebra simple, we'll pull FAB over to the left, multiply that by sine 60 to get 1,500. Sine 60 is 0.866, get this from your calculator. And so the stress within AB has to be equal to 1,500 pounds divided by the sine of 60 degrees, 0.866. And when we do this, we find that it's 1,732 pounds, so significantly greater uh, then the reaction, this is what we'd expect from triangular geometry, right? The hypotenuse is always, uh, always greater. We can now go ahead and also find the force in AC. This will be in that bottom chord, again, pulling on node A, counteracting the, the, um, the force, the left uh, leaning force in FAB. Here, because we know the opposite and we're trying to find the adjacent leg to the angle, uh, we'll use the tangent function, so tangent of 60 degrees, and that will equal 1,500 pounds, the opposite leg over FAC, the adjacent leg. Again, we can pull FAC over just to simplify the algebra. Tan 60 degrees is equal to 1.73, and so the stress within chord AC will be 1,500 pounds divided by 1.73. That is much less than the the, um, the, the vertical reaction, in fact, uh, just 867 pounds. So this has given us the two forces uh, in the chords that are at the angle given to us. These are the two forces that will successfully, in combination, resist that upward force, the 1,500 pounds that, that is the reaction or the, 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 the supporting force that holds the, holds the truss up. And for node A to stay in equilibrium, these are the combination of forces in that particular geometry that will uh, mean that the, the sum of the forces in the vertical direction and the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction will both be uh, zero. And we can come back to our uh, truss and we can add those on. So here we have 1,732 pounds. Here we have 867 pounds. Now, the next thing we can do, we can sort of walk over, and as we find more uh, answers to the, uh, to the uh, internal stresses in each chord, we can use those to perform a similar exercise on every single node. So we can think about what it would take, for instance, to keep node B in equilibrium if we know that there's a 1,732-pound compressive force uh, in that node. And we know just by looking at it that the hanger here is going to have a thousand pounds in it. Um, even though it's a little more complex, we have a way then to figure out what combination of forces in BC and BD would be needed to keep node B in equilibrium. So this is a more complex situation. We have um, the force in uh, AB, 1,732 pounds, pushing up. We know that we have the hanger, which has a thousand pounds in it that's pulling down. Um, we don't really know very much about FBC and FAC, and we sort of have to think this through. Uh, we can see here, though, that the 1,732 pounds 
it's likely to maybe be more of a vertical force pushing up than the thousand pounds pulling down. So we can guess that FBC is going to be in tension, right? That it's going to pull down along with the force in the hanger uh, and that the sum of those two, the, the sum of the vertical components of those two will have to successfully resist the vertical component of that force in AB, the 1,732 pounds. Once we know that, we will have probably, if that's the case, the sum of those two forces will be pushing node B left to right, and we'll need that force in the top chord, FAC, to actually be pushing right to left, right, to keep B uh, in equilibrium. Now, the problem here is that there's no good way to put this into a triangle, right? This is four forces acting on that node. And so what we actually have to do is we have to kind of keep track of all of the vertical forces and all of the horizontal forces. Now, you will not have to do this for the lab. This is kind of above and beyond. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to show you how we would go about doing this just to show how we think about the, the node B being uh, in equilibrium. So what we'll do is we start by saying, okay, well, B can't move up or down, right? The sum of all of the forces acting on it in the Y direction have to equal zero. And if we add all those up, what we find is that we have a vertical force in AB and the vertical component alone, the Y axis component alone, will be uh, some portion of that 1,732 pounds. Because of the 60 degree angle, uh, we know actually from what we just did that the vertical component will be sine of 60 degrees times whatever that force is. We know we have a vertical component in the hanger, which is a thousand pounds pulling down, right? That we get from the, uh, from the, the way the problem is given to us. And then we're also going to have uh, a force in FBC that has a vertical component. And again, the vertical component of that will be equal to whatever the total force is times sine of 60, right? That's the ratio of the vertical component of the force to the overall force. We have to be very careful about our signs here. So the second we say that, okay, this chord uh, AB is going to push up, that's going to be positive. Everything going in the opposite direction has to be negative. So note that the thousand pound force, we said that's going down, that's negative. And note that FBC also pulling down will say that that is negative as well. So we can multiply 1732 times sine of 60, and no surprise, we find that's 1500. We subtract the thousand pounds from that, and we're left with whatever the total force is in FBC times sine of 60 or 0.866. Again, the ratio of vertical component to overall force in the, in the number at 60 degrees. Simple math, 500 pounds minus FBC uh, times uh, sine of 60. This has to equal zero. We can pull FBC over to the other side. And what we find is that FBC is going to equal 500 pounds divided by sine of 60. And this works out to 577 pounds. So we have one cord that's pushing up 1,732 pounds. We have one cord that's pulling down 577 pounds. If we take only the vertical components out of those two and balance them against the 1,000 pounds that's pulling down, we find that we've kept node B in equilibrium vertically. So now we have to go back and we have to figure out how to keep it in check horizontally. The good news is we've already done the math to figure out what the, uh, what the total force in this chord is. So all we have to do is now add up those two horizontal components. Note that those two are both going in the same direction, left to right. And so now FAC we know has to be going right to left. The hanger has no horizontal component. It's just a vertical load, so we can ignore that. So sum of all forces in the x direction has to equal zero. We add those up. Now we're going to use the cosine of 60 because that's going to give us the horizontal component, not the vertical component uh, of, the, of, of the, the force within a 60 degree number. And so we're going to take the 1,732 pounds 
times that by cosine 60. We'll add that to the 577 pounds, also times cosine 60. And that will give us one clean number that we'll have to balance with only that horizontal force right, in, the, in the top number. Cosine 60 uh, is 0.5. So basically, we're taking half of the total magnitude uh, of those two loads. We find that that is 866 pounds there plus 288.5 pounds, all going left to right, so all positive, and that is balanced by the negative, the force moving right to left, that is the stress in chord AC. And if we do the math, we pull FAC over to the left, we get that the stress in FAC has to be 1154.5 pounds. That is positive, that means we've got the arrow right. If that number ends up being negative, all that means is that we have to go back to our free body diagram and flip the arrow around, right? It just means that we didn't think through the, uh, the, the, the situation completely when we were figuring out or guessing really uh, which way the arrows went. So now we have a, a stress in FAC that is 1154.5 pounds. And we can go back and we can put that onto our truss. And now just to keep track, we're gonna change the color of the text so that blue is always gonna represent compression and yellow is always going to represent tension. Now, you might ask, why haven't we done uh, an analysis of the node where the hanger connects with that bottom, um, that bottom uh, piece? And if you think about it, that node is pretty trivial. Um, there is only a vertical member and a horizontal member. So the vertical member has to do all the work of carrying the 1,000-pound load. The horizontal member, because it can't get any assistance from that hanger, uh, whatever the stress is on this side of the, uh, of the hanger is going to have to equal the stress on that side of the hanger. And now we can actually go through and we can just sort of do a thought experiment. We can be done with the math and we can figure out what the stresses are in the rest of the members. It's symmetrical, so we can go uh, left to right. We can flip a left to right. But also, if you think about, for instance, node C, right, we have 577 pounds in tension. So that's 577 pounds that's pulling up on C. And we have an equally angled chord between C and D. So that is going to have to be exactly equal to 577 pounds. But instead of pulling up, it's going to have to push down. And therefore, what we find is that um, we're going to have to have uh, a, a force within it that is 577 pounds, but now in compression instead of in tension. Once we do that, we realize that, oh, we have 577 pounds not only pulling up, but also pulling right to left in chord BC. We also have a compression force in CD that's pushing, so, but now it's not only pushing down, resisting the tension force in, in this chord, it's also pushing right to left. So these two forces, even though they balance out in the vertical dimension, are actually going in the same direction horizontally. And therefore, we have to uh, resolve that with an additional force in the bottom chord here. We have to take the horizontal component of 577, add it to the horizontal component of 577. Because the cosine of 60 is 0.5, what we find is that we're taking the stress that we already have here, 867 pounds, and we're adding another 577 pounds to it. And just by that alone, we can get that the stress in that center chord is going to be 1,444 pounds. And then from there, we can just flip left to right. And we see that, uh, in fact, um, we have uh, our biggest forces are in these two end chords, 1,732 pounds each. And then we have the same stress in each of the middle chords, but note that they change from tension to compression. And this is a kind of interesting story. If we look at this, uh, if we get in very, very closely, what we've done is we've found a way to keep all of the nodes in equilibrium. Um, but if we look at this, we get a little bit of a foreshadowing of what we'll uh, cover uh, in, the, in the next structures class when we start to talk about beams. 
And that is that the truss is a vector active element, vector active structure. Um, but if we zoom way out and squint at it, it begins to function very much like a beam. And what I mean by that is if you think about a beam and bending, right? when you bend something, you're putting the top into compression, you're putting the bottom into tension, right? squeezing the top together, pulling the bottom apart. That's the definition of bending. And look what's happening in our truss. The top cords are all in varying degrees of compression, getting pushed together. The bottom cords are all in varying degrees of tension, getting pulled apart. And just like in many trusses, we've drawn the, the bottom cord here as a thin tension member, guessing that that's where it's going to go. And in fact, our analysis shows that the truss, through its vector active behavior, is beginning to approximate uh, the function of a beam, a section active member. And that is a jump that we will take uh, in future classes. Okay, it uh, just remains for us to go through uh, some case studies, which we'll do uh, in the next uh, little lecture bite. For the lab, again, you'll need to know uh, basically the procedure that we used for cord A, and the truss that you'll be given in the lab example um, will have a fairly simple uh, geometry uh, using 45 degree angles and a fairly simple loading condition. So again, the process that we found for, that we used for uh, to find uh, equilibrium in node A should be uh, all that you need.